And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Now, I'm not known for my love of solo games. To me, why play a solo game if you can just play on the computer? Uh, I'm also not a big fan of print and play games. Not because I think they're bad games, but because it's a lot of work for me to print out all that stuff and play it when there's thousands of commercial games. Zombie in My Pocket started out as a print and play solitaire game. So I had zero interest in it. Not to mention, I think zombie themes are starting to get overused. So obviously a lot of people liked it, picked it up, and was sent to me, but now it says on here, for one to eight victims. Eight players. Well now we're talking. That's something I'm much more interested in. So I gave it a try, and was I ever surprised at what I thought of this game. At the beginning of the game, everybody gets two cards, a flea and a fight card. And they keep those in front of them. Everyone also gets a die. You start at a certain... The die is basically just put in front of you to show how many health points you have. The starting health depends on how many people are playing. For example, if you're playing with one person, you start with six health. If you're playing with eight people, you all start with only two health. Then, the leader card is given to somebody. That person goes first. And... You set basically the game up the way it is here. You're going to be going through a house as a party, and so you start in the foyer. And on your turn, each turn, whoever has the leader card decides what's going to happen each turn. They can choose to cower. If they cower, everybody gets one health. Hurrah! Can't go over six, but hey, what do you do? However, an event card is discarded when that happens. The reason you do that is because after all nine event cards are gone through, this doom track moves to 10 o'clock. It starts at 9 p.m., and then moves to 10 p.m. Uh, after 11 p.m., if you move it again, it's too late, and, well, everyone is going to die. So you really don't want that to happen. So you can cower and get health, but you're spending time to do so. The leader can also decide to explore. When he does so, he draws a room from the proper deck, indoor or outdoor, connects it somewhere, and everybody moves into that room. However, when you do that, you must draw an event card. So let's see what event card we've drawn this time. It depends what time it is, so let's say it's 9 o'clock. Two plus X smoldering zombies have shown up. Now, the plus X depends on how many people are playing the game. As you can see here, let's say four people are playing. Right here in the third column, that plus X would be plus 5. So we have to fight seven zombies. Now, each person has to decide whether they're going to stay and fight the zombies or run away. It's very simple. If you, everybody flees, if everyone plays a flea card, everybody loses one health and you must leave that room. However, if you flee and at least one other person stays and fights, you get one health. Hooray! If you fight, you add plus one to your group total, and these people are going to take damage equal to the difference between the zombie's power and everyone's total fight. Usually you're going to take damage. The leader decides how that damage is split out. It has to be as even as possible, but since it almost never will be even, the excess damage goes to whoever the leader says it goes to. The leader changes each turn, so don't think they have too much power. As the game progresses, you might find items that will help you out. Here's oil. Here's a femur bone. Here's a Coca-Cola chainsaw, which lets you use these fuel chips. It gives you plus three, but you only get to use those fuel chips so many times. What you're going to be doing is you'll be moving throughout the house until you will eventually find the room. Well, I'm looking at the outside cards. No wonder I can't find it. But eventually you will find the evil temple card. And when you go there, someone gets this cursed totem. You then need to get outside and find the graveyard. And once you find the graveyard outside, you will then dig into that graveyard, here's the graveyard right there, and bury the evil totem, and you win. Of course, every time you move, you have another encounter with zombies, and you fight. If you do that, the person who has the most health gets four points. Everyone else who survives gets three points. Anyone who dies, well, they get no points, and you start another game. Whoever has the most points wins. 
Now, there's a few other rules involved with this game, uh, but, but I won't go into all those. And uh, again, I'm kind of ignoring the whole solitaire aspect. It's like a puzzle you got to figure out how to get through. How many turns, what weapons can you find, blah, blah, blah. It's the multiplayer game that has me intrigued because it is psycho. One person is there saying, okay, let's fight. Everyone says, yeah, let's fight. One person runs away. Ha, 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 I have the most health now. I'm going to survive with the most health. Ha, ha, ha. Of course, there's ways that other players can get back at him. But if you run all the time, you do have a bit of an advantage. But the chance of everybody winning is small. So eventually there comes a point where you have to fight. There's also small things where if you, there's, a, there's a window that you have to go through to go to the outside. And you could throw someone through that window <laughs> and take a point of damage. The leader determines that. And so it's very, very interesting. Once you get weapons, can we take these zombies out? Okay, if we're going to fight them together, who's taking the damage? And there's a lot of back and forth. Now, it can devolve. And kids will do better at the game than the adults will because they will work together while adults will sit there and say, I want the sure victory. I want the most points. It's almost like a psychological experiment than it is a, a game per se. But I had a lot of fun. Not everyone enjoyed it. Some people really get irritated when someone promises them that they will stay and fight and then runs away. I just laugh it off and then remember it for the next 25 games. I play with that person and I can't. But it's really a lot of fun. Zombies in my pocket. Not really sure what that means. I mean, I, I, at some point you have to fight some zombies that come out of your pocket. But other than that, um, psychological, or if you play solitaire, a puzzle. Hey, get both in a small, inexpensive package. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.